On the last video, we installed the Slice Mosquito Hot End on our Creality Ender 5. Today, we're going to take a look at what it takes to tune that hot end and get it printing optimally. It's not that hard to do, and it's only a couple steps needed. The first thing we're going to do is adjust some firmware settings in the TH3D Easy Compiler to accommodate the Slice Engineering Thermistor. We're going to have to change our thermistor value to 67 as well as set the max hot end temp to 450 degrees celsius so let's go ahead and do that right now so under the thermal tab on the easy firmware configurator we're going to go to our thermistor and select a known hot end thermistor with the value of 67 for the slice engineering one and we're going to set our max temp to 450 other than that, all the firmware stuff's going to be the same. Now that we've got the new firmware loaded onto our SD card, we can go ahead and turn on the printer. It's going to take a little bit longer to load, and that's normal. It's also going to have a little bit longer beep. That's as well normal. Now as soon as this gets loaded up, we can go ahead and reset our EEPROM, and we'll get ready to move on to the next step. To reset your EE prom, you're just going to go down to configuration and scroll all the way down to the bottom where it says reset EE prom. Go ahead and hit reset. The next thing we want to do is make sure that our probe Z offset is set to zero, which it is. And we can go ahead and perform a auto home on this to get ready to set our baby stepping for the Z. So we'll just go to Auto Home and exit back out of this for now. Once the printer has successfully auto homed, we can go ahead and preheat our bed. Now what that'll do is make sure that the bed is true to what it will be like when it's printing. The heat is gonna cause a little bit of warpage in the bed so we want to make sure it's as true to actual printing conditions as possible when we go to set our Easy ABL Pro sensor. All you're going to need to set your Easy ABL sensor is a piece of paper and a small flathead screwdriver for adjusting the screw. Once your bed is up to temperature, we can go ahead and set our paper underneath the nozzle. And what we're going to want to do is go into our motion tab move axis, move Z, move one millimeter, and bring it down four millimeters so that it is one millimeter above the bed. Now, why we auto home before this is our printer is set to auto home to five millimeters above the bed. So we know that if we're five millimeters above the bed, we can drop it down four using the one millimeter option, back out of that, and then we'll go to the move 0.1 or move 0 0.025, whichever one you have active, and we're just going to bring down our bed until we feel the nozzle dragging on the paper. And it's okay if this is a negative number because that's what we're going to set our Z offset to. Now, if the negative number is too great, say 0.5 or above, we don't want to be using a half millimeter of Z offset. So what we'll do is we'll just bring down the nozzle so it's just above the paper. You can see I can slide this perfectly fine and I have no resistance. So the nozzle's not actually touching anything. But if we turn our light off, we can see that the Easy ABL is showing active. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and turn this counterclockwise until the green light turns on. And that means that the Easy ABL is not sensing anything, so it's going to basically reset our height. So you can see now the light is green. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn it clockwise now till it turns red again. And we want it to stay red when we turn or when we pull our tool away. Now what we can do if we go back into our motion tab we can re-auto home. We're gonna to wanna to pull our paper out so that it's not affecting anything. And we're gonna repeat this process. 
hopefully if we did it right, we're not gonna have so much of a Z offset to compensate for. Before, I was lowering down my nozzle about 0.6 of a millimeter in order for it to even grab. That's way too much Z offset. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna try the same thing again. We'll go into motion, move access, move Z, and we're gonna bring it down until we're touching the paper. And we're just gonna take note of what that value is on the screen. Now obviously if you have a positive number here, that means that your probe is probing too far down and you're gonna to wanna to readjust it again. You always want this number to be somewhat negative. That way every time you probe, it's not leaving like a little bit of nozzle or a little bit of filament on the bed or it's not actually pushing your bed down. Right now at zero, zero, I can just barely ever so slightly feel the paper. That's perfect. I bring it down to 0 0.05 millimeters and now I can start to feel it just barely grab it. And about 0.1 millimeters is where this feels really good to where I'm happy with the amount of squish that it's gonna put. So what we can do is raise back up to five millimeters so we're not touching the bed. And we're gonna go and save that value as our new Z offset. This can be done by going down to configuration, probe Z offset, and we're gonna scroll down to the value that we had. So 0.1 was my value. And we're gonna go down to where it says store settings. And we're gonna store those settings. Go back to the info screen and we wanna see that it says settings stored right down at the bottom. Now that we have that done, our probe should be good to go. So easy AVL will be active and accurate. This will give us better bed adhesion, so we don't have to worry about that variable when it comes to tuning the HADA. The next step is gonna to be to run a PID test. That way we have accurate temperatures on our HADA. In order to do that, we're just gonna go down here and we're gonna to go to configuration, advanced settings. We're gonna go down all the way to temperature and we're gonna hit PID auto tune E1 and select 200 degrees. What this is gonna do is this is gonna do a automatic tune where it heats up to 200 degrees, uh, goes up and down a bunch of times, and that's gonna help it determine what the right settings are for your hot end. And this is just gonna ensure that we have accurate temperatures. The next step is gonna be to go over to Kira, import a 20 millimeter calibration cube and we're gonna change a couple slicer settings on it to accommodate this new hot end. So we got this calibration cube loaded up and we're just gonna change a couple settings here. Uh, I don't think we need to change anything in the quality or shell areas. Infill looks good. However, I am gonna up the print temperature just a little bit here. Uh, it's always good to start a little bit high on the print temp and you can work your way down. But 210 is still a safe temperature. Um, as far as speed goes, because this is a new hot end, I do want to turn this down just a little bit. Um, I think 55 sounds like a good number to start with, but we'll leave this pretty much stock, um, or at least close to stock. Whoops, didn't mean to hit that there. Um, but 55 is a pretty conservative, and we can always bump up from there. Uh, I think my retraction settings look good. I'm not going to change any of those. The cooling looked good, no need to change any of that. I do want to add an extra skirt line just for some bed adhesion. But other than that, I'm going to go ahead and call it good, slice it, and save the file. Now that we got a file loaded onto our SD card, we can go ahead and start our first test print. Essentially all I really changed in Cura was I bumped up my printing temperature just a tiny bit to accommodate the filament I'm using. But the main thing I did was reduce my print speed down to 55 millimeters a second and that's just because I'd rather have a little slower speed to start out with, and then we can always bump up from there. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start a 20 millimeter test cube. And then what we can do is we can measure it, check our dimensional proportions, make sure everything's accurate, and dial it in further from there as needed. be 
idiot on how to tune your Mosquito hot end. Took me a little bit to get the bed adhesion figured out. Once I got that Z offset right and my temperatures correct, I had no issues. Printed out a couple more cubes in different colors. I also changed the retraction settings and print speeds until I got it looking just like I wanted to. All it takes is a little bit of trial and error. Each cube takes about 45 minutes to print out depending on how fast you have your print settings at. Some can take up to an hour, but in the grand scheme of things, it's really not that long. Um, it only takes a handful of these prints to really get it dialed in. My tip would be to start with small increments when it comes to changes and make one change at a time. Also, you're gonna wanna keep a log of all the settings that you changed for each print. That way you can go back and refer to it when it's time to judge which print looks the best. And it'll be easier to figure out which settings made the biggest differences. So if you enjoyed today's video on how to tune your Mosquito hot end, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, put them down in the comment section below and I'll get to them as quick as I can. And make sure to hit that subscribe button, that way you can stay up to date on the latest content from Modified 3D. Also, subscribe to my Instagram, at Modified 3D, for even more content when it comes to modifying your 3D printer. My name is Alex, and this is Modified 3D. Have a good one.